Hi students, let's talk about scientific conclusions using CER. Here's the essential question. How do we write a scientific conclusion using the CER method? Well, what is CER? CER is just a method when we write conclusions after a scientific experiment or research that includes claim, evidence, and reasoning. Now I'm gonna go over each of these bullets or each of these points, but I wanna talk a little bit about why this is important. CER is super powerful. It provides a basis to test the validity of statements. For example, let's go back and look at the COVID-19 pandemic. There was a lot of people who were concerned about masks being unsafe. And they thought that, well, maybe because when we have CO2, when we're breathing out carbon dioxide, it builds up in the mask and that's causing it to be unsafe, uh, causing it to be unsafe. Hey, that's a great claim. Now, the great thing about that claim and the way it's stated is it's testable. And by testing it, we were able to find that the evidence doesn't support that claim. We're able to look and there was independent researchers and doctors who also, you know, throughout their entire career who wore a mask and had no problems. So the evidence didn't support the claim of that statement. But merely stating that statement gave us a little bit of information. Now, conclusions provide insight into further exploration of a SOP topic as well. We could look further into masks as ge generally because we know that they are helpful. And we say, oh, maybe cloth masks are more effective than neck gaiters against COVID-19. We can provide a new statement and provide and to collect more evidence in order to give, gather further insights into this topic. And the reason I'm saying this is because a lot of students get really frustrated when they find out that maybe their claim or they're worried that their claim is wrong. And that's not detrimental to a scientifically minded person. If we end up having a wrong claim, that's just that's just information. We learn more. We collected more evidence. It's how you react to new data and what further evidence you can provide. That's what truly matters in science. All right, so let's go over each of the pieces. Let's start with a claim. A claim is a bold and concise explanation to a problem, topic, or essential question. Now, I'm going to give you an example of a claim in a moment. Let's talk about a few things we should consider when we write our claims. The first is that it should be bold and specific. What I mean by that is try to avoid referring to your personal thoughts and beliefs and just state it as it would be a fact or true because you collected evidence towards it. It should include specific results or an outcome. Try not to be wishy-washy or very broad, be very specific. Now your claim should be short, it should be concise. That's what short, that's what it means to be short, um, which means it's probably no more than one, maybe two sentences at most. It must answer or solve all parts of the question or problem that's at hand. And you may need to, when writing it, restate the question or problem for clarity for people who are reading it. Don't assume people know what question is being asked. Make sure you include that as part of the answer. So let me give you an example of a good claim. So let's say we were learning about electricity and we wanted to know if electricity was matter. Maybe this was an essential question given to us or it was just something we were just asking ourselves. Well, one good claim to this would be electricity is not matter because it does not have mass or take up space. It's very, this, this is a very short and concise claim. Now, it doesn't really provide any background information. We'll get to that later when we talk about evidence and reasoning. We're just stating right away what we think or what we claim to be a fact based on all that evidence and reasoning that we'll explain later. All right, so here's some bad examples. Now this first example right here isn't that great. It, it's kind of wishy-washy. I don't really like it as a teacher because I don't like the word think, right? I don't think that electricity is matter. Why don't they just state that electricity is not matter? Also, there's a lot of extra words and statements in here that don't really, aren't really needed. A lot of this might be better off in a different like either evidence or reasoning statement. This next one isn't a claim at all. It's more what they did in the experiment. Um, and so this is not really helpful here. It's not claiming an answer to that essential question. Now, the last one is a definition of electricity and we have the same problem. It's not really claiming if electricity is matter or not. It's just defining electricity. All right, let's go on to the next bullet, evidence. Evidence should be specific collected data that supports a claim. So what should we consider about this? 
Well, the data that's collected should include both qualitative and quantitative if possible. Qualitative data is just data that you observe during an experiment and quantitative is like data that you measure using a ruler or a thermometer or any type of measuring device. And these are facts that you've collected in your experiment. So we should be using specific results from an experiment or an experience. Typically this comes from data table results that we collect ourselves. Now, we could also include quotes from credible articles. Sometimes we might need to apply what we're learning to real life situations. So going out and researching other articles, we can include quotes from credible articles. Now, we should limit our evidence to those that specifically support the claim. A lot of times we collect evidence and we might collect way more evidence than we actually need. We're just going to list the evidence that specifically supports our claim. Now, this is typically short as well, probably two to three sentences. We're just listing evidence. We're not explaining the evidence. We're not really telling why or how it works. That will be in the next section when we talk about reasoning. So we're just providing the facts. We're not explaining them yet. All right, so here is an example of, of evidence. Sorry, I had to fix the top part of this up here, evidence. So here's some examples of, of some evidence. Evidence. Let's say again, here's the essential question. Are the properties, how are the properties of metals and nonmetals and metalloids useful, useful to society? So again, let's say we did an experience where we were exploring the properties of metals and nonmetals and metalloids, and we wanted to know whether they were useful. So here's an example of evidence. Now, this was specifically collected in a lab. In an experiment, various samples of matter went through the hardness test. Samples A, C, and F were malleable, while samples B, D, and E were brittle. Notice I'm just listing data. I'm listing evidence, observations that we collected. Not really explaining anything quite yet, but this does relate to the essential question and we'll explain how in the next section. Here's another example of evidence. This could also be part of the same essential question. In an article, The Chemistry of Silicon Valley, the author states silicon has a unique semiconductive property that makes it perfect for computer circuits. So we went out and we did a little bit of research. We found an article that helps support our claim, which isn't written here, by the way, but it does help answer the question. So assuming that our claim relates to that. All right, so here are some not so great evidence examples. In this lab, we tested a bunch of different substances by putting them in acid. Again, this, this says what they did, but it's not really evidence. It just This is just the procedure. This is what they did in the experiment. There's no specific results here. The next one paraphrases the article too much. And this might belong better in the reasoning section. What we really need to do is actually quote the article in the evidence section because it's evidence that we are listing from an article. And finally, this last one is kind of lazy. They're telling somebody to go look at their data table to see the data. Um, and the data table might include way more information than we need. So really, we should be listing specific pieces of data. All right, let's end up with reasoning. The reasoning is the longest, deepest scientific explanation of everything. So this is the deep scientific explanation of why your claim is correct and how the evidence supports it. So stuff we should consider here, we need to explain how and why your chosen evidence supports your claim. So we're kind of backing up our claim with the evidence that we chose and we're explaining the evidence and we're explaining the claim. This should be long. It should be many sentences long. You should include things like scientific definitions. We should include explanations to help with understanding. We should include science concepts, any formulas or calculations. Those types of things should be explained here so people understand what we know what's going on. We're applying our knowledge to show that we're smart in this section. Now, one thing I'd like to say here is assume your reader doesn't know what's going on. I know a lot of times it's your science teacher, it might be me reading your article, but I read it kind of scrutinizing it as a non-scientific person. We want to be able to read this to understand it. All right, here is a good example of a reasoning statement. Imagine we had an essential question. How is Newton's third law applied to a rocket? 
Now, here is the statement, and I'm not going to read the whole thing. You can pause and read it yourself. But things to look for in here, notice that there are some, some definitions. If you look here, I see Newton's third law of motion, and it's defined. We see how it's applied in the rocket. So we're seeing here that it's actually being applied. Down here, it talks about how it's applied not only in real life, but to their actual experiment itself. They explain their experimental results and um, they apply that Newton's third law to their experiment in that last sentence. All right, a couple not so great reasoning examples. Here's one. This first one doesn't really reason with anything. It's, it's very lazy. And it's talking more about that they understand Newton's third law. We don't care that you learned anything. I mean, we do. Uh, we want you to explain it is what we really want in the reasoning section. This next one isn't really good because it does again doesn't explain anything it just assumes that we understand what's going on there's no ex explanation going on here all right that's the end of the notes take a moment to review and highlight key terms ponder and ask questions summarize and answer the essential question good luck